It's been 31 years since Ghana ushered in the 1992 constitution to set the tone for the restart of democratic rule following previous disruptions. It is also the day on which a new president is sworn in after every four years. As we prepare for elections ahead of next year's inauguration of a new president, we'll hear from President Ekofuado, who is in his last step, on how he intends to ensure our democracy remains intact beyond his tenure. Let's do a historical track of how far we've come as a people. Constitution Day is one of the three public holidays established by the Public Holiday Act 2001, Act 601, signed into law by President Ekufuado in 2018. Celebrated on January 7th, it commemorates the adoption of the Constitution of the Fourth Republic of Ghana in 1993. The holiday declared and the Section 2 of the Public Holiday Act emphasizes the importance of democracy, liberty, democratic governance, rule of law, accountability, and constitutionalism. Before the Fourth Republic's constitution, Ghana experienced three interrupted political administrations marked by military coups, including the overthrow of the first Prime Minister and President, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, in 1966. Subsequent leaders, such as Dr. Kofi Abrifabusia and Dr. Helaliman, faced truncated tenures due to coups. These coups were prompted by accusations of corruption, dictatorship, and unpopular governance. The establishment of the Fourth Republican Constitution reflects Ghana's commitment to avoiding a return to past political instability with five successful elected democratic governments alternating between two political parties strict adherence to democratic principles has become a hallmark of the fourth republic article 3 4 of the 1992 constitution further mandates every Ghanaian citizen to defend the constitution rejecting any threat to democracy and standing against oppression and instability We'll hear from President Ekufuado shortly. Right now, though, let's hear from you, the citizen. My colleague, Kenneth Jesse, interacted with some of you. The 1992 Constitution is the country's longest uninterrupted written constitution since independence. 32 years after that constitution, it was drafted. How well has it served the country? We're on the streets of Accra to find out from Ghanaians what they think about the 1992 Constitution. Right now, dear, the constitution is many, but we are not seeing any changes. There is no job for the youth. I mean, it's a whole lot. It seems like those in the parliament or those in the government, they are enjoying. And we that we are sitting back, we are suffering. Maybe uh, can, you, you can imagine one minister having six cars. And even the six cars too, government is wearing them. Even their house, they are not paying um, electricity bill. It will all go and come, then it will come and build on us. We will pay everything. I mean, we are suffering. So I think the government should, cast, should cut most of the costs. I mean, the traveling and the aspects. Some people can go on vacation. If, and if they are going to, it's on first class plane. It's not economy or anything. So the government should cut the cost so that we, too, we, the youth in Ghana here, we can also have a lot of jobs. We need jobs. We need jobs. It really needs to be amended because um, the system is different now. And I think now nobody kind of checks anybody. So these are our leaders, the president, um, MPs or other political uh, uh, gurus. Nobody checks them. They do whatever they want. Even like this, no system. Even our um, rent and stuff nobody checks anybody but can just build and give it any price at all they want and they know definitely somebody else will come for it if you don't go for it yeah you tell me a single room is a um, thousand cities per month i mean what are we doing what kind of works uh, is available in ghana how does it pay and you know right now we are here we say we are suffering the president is okay everybody else, like there is political uh, uh, guys, they are okay, they are doing just fine, and nobody is checking them, nobody is even asking how did this go, unless it's time for accountability. Uh, Ghana Constitution, ni ministers, ni MP, 
you who move fast for what so organa ha. MP call retire or Joe Mine or Jiffy or Jacca and Fasuni Sumano. Go your word, my papa, be on my Magana up to now. There are too many MPs for a small country like Ghana. Ghana is almost 70 years, but we are still suffering. We need to slash the number of MPs to 16, one MP from each region. Ministers, Omodos, Hondo, MPs, Omodos, Mom, Mino. At least 16 regions in Ghana, no. You used to assemble a war on my South Regents, so on. You used to minister back home and an MP back home, Regents, and I'm who is a Babuagana. Calls for an amendment of the Constitution continues to grow from CSOs to ordinary Guineans. For Joy News, I'm Kenneth Jesse. We can now hear President Ekufado's Constitutional Day message. This should Ghana is considered the beacon of democracy and stability in Africa. And the celebration of Constitution Day should inspire us, Ghanaians, even further to hold on to this enviable status. And it is therefore gratifying to note that the nation's adherence to democracy has not waned. We know that there are no quick fixes to the challenges confronting us. And as we have seen in recent times, democratic structures of governance are capable of accommodating the most difficult of circumstances. Fellow Ghanaians, Democracies are grounded on viable elections. And this year, like we have done on eight other preceding occasions, we will go to the polls to elect the president and my successor. No true Democrat can disregard the importance of elections and the sanctity of the ballot. It must thus be in our collective interest to ensure that the rules and regulations for the conduct of this year's elections are fair and transparent, and that we all develop respect for them, a respect that should not be a function of whether you win or lose. All stakeholders, that is the Electoral Commission, the political parties and their leaders, the electorate and citizenry, should work to assure the consolidation of Ghanaian democracy and help us maintain our pride of place on the continent as a model of democracy in Africa. Well, President Okufuado says that three years after the 2020 election, he's still waiting a congratulatory message from his main opponent, John Dramani Mahama, on his hard-fought victory. The president, while addressing the nation on Constitution Day, emphasized the importance of a gracious acknowledgement in the spirit of democracy. There should be no lingering doubt about the legitimacy of the election. And the winning candidates on the conclusion of the process should receive the unalloyed support of all. That is how we can strengthen our democracy and the peace and stability of our nation. On a lighter note, three years on, I'm still waiting for my main opponent in the 2020 elections to congratulate me on my victory. I swore an oath on 7th January 2017, and again, four years later on 7th January 2021, to be faithful and true to the Republic of Ghana and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. I shall continue to do just that. 
John Mahama's camp is not enthused about congratulating the president. Spokesperson Felix Kwachiofoso believes he doesn't deserve it, and this is why he says so. We're here in this day and age, at this twilight of a standard president, we demanded congratulations for elections that were held several years ago. And in any event, why would President Akufuado expect to be congratulated when he clearly procured that victory through bloody means? As I speak to you, eight Ghanaians who merely stepped out to observe these elections were gunned down in cold blood by rogue elements and listed into the Ghana armed forces by President Akufuado and his government. So now, not a whimper has been heard from him in terms of what is being done to seek justice for those who lost their lives. It would have been useful for him to have seized the opportunity of this address to update Daniels on what he was doing. If you shed blood to win elections, why did anybody congratulate you? Congratulations are reserved for those who play fairly, who play by the book, and win fairly. Because I think does not fall into that category. So Ghanaians are not interested in this pursuit of, of uh, vanity by Pedro Akufuado. He should focus on the important things that affect the lives of everybody in this country. The hundreds of youth chanted patriotic songs as military and policemen prevented them from accessing the Independence Square for a convention program. The convention, which is put together by the New Africa Foundation, brought together thought leaders in Africa, including Professor PLO Lumumba, Peter Obi, Julius Malema, and others to speak on key challenges confronting Africa's development. The program, which was scheduled to start at 5 p.m. today, is currently on hold because some armed military men and police are currently manning the entrance to the Independence Square, preventing entry to members of the public. It is unclear why the new turn of event, but we can listen to some of the patrons who throng the place wanting entry. Because you sent your men, Dampari, you yeah. sent your men, oh, yeah. and then you and have the voice. From above. Order from above. You know the orders, and you know the power. Yes, you know to who? This thing is not, not in the remit. Here? Is it not in the remit of the constitution? Uh -huh. Hasn't it been organized within the remit of the law? Uh -huh. So how can you tell us that uh -huh. the power above uh -huh. us is canceling the program? Who uh -huh. network power to them? Yes. Who gave food power? Yes. Yes. Now, let's go. Let's go. Before we go to Malima, you were talking about this thing. Article 1 of our constitution. What does it tell us? It says supremacy resides in the hands of the public, not in the hands of government. Yes. This is a state apart, yes. not a government apart. This is a state apart. What is happening here? No well, my colleague James Avedu was there and joins me on the line. James, where are you currently? What's happening there? Mami, so uh, we've just left the Independence Square to uh, have a press conference with organizers of uh, the uh, conference. And so uh, leaving there, what, what we have seen on TV is currently the situation where armed uh, military officers as well as police actually man in the entrance. I counted about 10 military officers and about 20 to 30 police officers who are behind the metal barricade. So when you get to the Independence Square, the entrance is currently blocked with metal barricades, preventing anyone to enter. When you look around, you would see the stage being set already uh, uh, to begin the program. When I interacted with one of the gentlemen who were in the convention t-shirt who told me uh, he worked with one of the organizers of the program. He told me that as early as 3 p.m., uh, the officers came there to drive away uh, some of the organizers who were even there mounting the rest of the structures that were supposed to be mounted. And so they came there to drive those who were already in the Independence Square before mounting the metal barricade. And so uh, as we speak, hundreds of patrons are actually on at the entrance of the Independence Square on the road all around the Black Star Square uh, wanting to enter 
uh, the place to uh, get a program started. But as we speak, there is uh, going to be, uh, we are told, a press conference to address uh, the issue by the organizers. And so that's what we are looking forward to, to bring uh, in a short while, Mami. But, uh, but James, have you had any information as to why um, they are being prevented from using the venue? It is still unclear why they've been prevented from uh, uh, entering the venue. When I spoke to uh, some of the uh, patrons, they tell me that when they approach the security persons, in fact, they do not want, the security persons do not want anything to do with the media. They prevented us from getting closer to the barricade. And what they were told was that this is an order from above. And so what they are carrying on is actually an order from above. From uh, who exactly gave the order, we do not know yet. But do we know the organizers of this um, convention? And we know that um, the, the likes of PLO, Lumumba, Peter Obi, uh, Julius Malema, they are in town for the event? Yes, the information we have is that this is organized by one, the new foundation. But as to the exact personnel behind the new foundation, we do not know. That will come clear when we get to the press conference and whoever addressed the press conference, uh, we will know from there who the exact spaces are behind the new foundation. Uh, but we are also told by, uh, I mean, some of the organizers on the ground, the one I spoke to in the teacher, that uh, these invited guests are already in town, uh, 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 Julius Malema from South Africa, Pielo Lumumba from Kenya, Pitaobi uh, from uh, Nigeria, and the others. Uh, we know that our own Stoneboy, Wiala, Asia, and the others were also built to perform at this particular event. And so uh, the, those coming from the other countries, including some citizens from the other countries, are already in town to participate in this particular event. And so the guests are in town, artists are ready to perform before there's a, a new turn of events at about 3, 4 p.m. today. Thank you very much, James Avergi is our man on the ground getting information about this new Africa convention, which was supposed to come off at 5 p.m., but has been suddenly cancelled. We don't know the reasons why, but we'll certainly find out why. Keep your dial right here, and we'll be bringing you updates on that development. Now, ADA community sub-chiefs have found the National Democratic Congress parliamentary candidate for the SEGE constituency, Daniel Bessie, three rams, cartons of gin, and a cash amount for allegedly saying that no chief exists in Ada. Upon payment of the fine, he is free to launch his political campaign in some Ada communities. Daniel Bessé rendered an unqualified apology to the chiefs, but the chiefs insisted that verbal apology is not enough. Carlos Caloni has more of the story. At a press conference in Adan on Thursday, 30th November 2023, the Adan community sub-chiefs gave the National Democratic Congress NDC's parliamentary candidate for Sege constituency, Daniel Bessie, a seven-day ultimatum to retract and apologize for allegedly stating on a live radio program that no chief exists in Adan. Despite the ultimatum, Mr. Bessie failed to apologize within the specified time frame. Consequently, the chiefs on December 5, 2023, in a letter signed by Nene Tete Asigbe, banned Mr. Bessie from carrying out any political campaign activities in the Adan traditional area. However, on December 6, 2024, accompanied by former district chief executive of Ada, Anthony Yao Klopa, and NDC chairman from Ada and Sege constituencies, Daniel Bessie formally retracted his earlier statement before the chiefs and offered an apology along with fines, including two cartons of gin, two gallons of local gin akweteshi, three rams, soft drinks, and an undisclosed amount of cash. Daniel Bessie spoke to Joy News after the apology. I made a statement which is an offense to the authorities of my land against my chiefs, against my elders, and, uh, and I, and the paramountcy, and upon reflection, and then other guided statements and guidances, I realized my offense. Uh, I came in consultation with the chiefs to plead to be forgiven, and to God be the glory, uh, I have been forgiven. 
uh, I must say that let this be a lesson to all of us, particularly those of us in the political class, those of us in leadership, those of us in business, those of us uh, who are subject to our leaders at all times. Let's practice decorum. The chiefs accepted his apology, lifting the ban. Secretary to the South Chiefs, Nene Dame Sewu III, urged politicians to speak responsibly ahead of the December polls. We are so happy today that marks the end of this unfortunate incident because he came with elders to plead with the authorities. They were asked to do the needful of which they have come today to do it. We are happy as chiefs in the traditional area. Going forward is a lesson for all of us, especially to all politicians and people in all leadership positions, that we are building a nation. It begins with communities, and then the minute is a family. So we need to demonstrate leadership qualities, but according everybody at every level, the needed respect. It's part of us now, and we ask all our citizens to accord him the needed support come in the engineering period that we will work together with all political actors. We will work with all businessmen to ensure that our constituency also grows from strength to strength. The NDC's constituency chairman for Sege, Inokte Sewanu, also advised party members to learn from this unfortunate incident. I advise all our members to put respect above everything that we do as we campaign for the 2024 election. A dance traditional authority emphasizes collaboration with all politicians for rapid development. Carlos Galoni, Joy News, Ada. You're still watching Joy News Prime. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. Our next story sheds light on individuals who are homeless living on the streets around Kwame Nkrumah Circle. Despite their challenging circumstances, these individuals have taken the initiative to clean the streets every first Saturday of the month. In conversations with my colleague Caleb Osei Mensa, these men and women express their desire to reside in a clean and beautiful environment, emphasizing their assuring the AMA their commitment to implement positive changes despite their current predicament. We might be homeless, but we're not dirty. That is the message the homeless around the Kwame Nkrumah Circle are hoping to push with their monthly cleanup exercise initiative. This initiative seeks to challenge stereotypes and showcase their commitment to maintaining a clean environment despite their homeless status. Chairman of the Streets and Homeless Community, Prince Boating, says they have endured mistreatment by city authorities for years and have often been blamed on barely for the filth in the capital. The Amaya organized the street exercise in the We organize the street exercises because the AMA keeps harassing us. We receive lashes on our backs sometimes for sleeping at the wrong places. We are tied to junkies because we do not keep the place tidy. But we are all not like that. So we have to organize the street exercises to create a clean and peaceful atmosphere with the AMA. And that's all from us and the crew here at Joy News on Joy News Prime. There's more news on my joyonline.com. I am Amisi Nyamiche Thompson.